You're the inventor of, of this Sensate device. I have it around my neck now, dangling just where it hangs right in between my, my massive pecs. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about what it is, what it does, um, how it functions, being that you're the inventor. I spent several years coming to this final point and this aha moment, um, which we touched on, but I didn't actually tell you what it was. My <laughs> father taught me and my brother to meditate at a very young age. I've been meditating many, many decades. Um, and I started teaching people to meditate um, 30 or so years ago. Uh, and I found that about 10, 15 years ago, that people's ability to meditate had really declined. People who were, who were very stressed and not very patient, I could say to them, OK, do this breathing exercise for 20 minutes a day or this meditation practice and come back in a month. You know, it got to the point where people weren't even able to do a 10 minute headspace session. You say, oh, I sit there, you know, just wondering when it's going to finish or I actually feel more anxious. Um, mm -hmm. because it makes me aware of my body, makes me aware of my breathing. Um, I also have an absolute belief that, you know, we need to reach a critical mass of people in the world, hundreds of millions of people who are much more able to control their feelings and their fear. Yeah, as long as we're leaving, living in a world full of fear, people are going to make short term decisions that are not based on the future of the planet. The number one thing that determines your resiliency is your vagal tone. You know, if you're going to try and do one thing, I absolutely passionately believe now the one thing you should do is improve your vagal tone uh, because the, the implications for that across your entire system, physically and mentally and emotionally, are profound. Human beings have been doing things to make their chest resonate since the beginning of time. Uh, you know, we got a lot of big cathedrals in, in, in England where I live. I found the organist and I said, you know, I've heard about this thing. Can you show me in this huge organ? You know, they're monstrous, these things. They're massive. They've got thousands of pipes. And I said, you know, can you play the lowest octave for me? And he did. I said, yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and then you can start to feel the building move. And I think that's a big part of the um, of what these guys were trying to achieve with this low frequency infrasound part of the composition was to make the entire building and body vibrate. So you can imagine uh, a building full of hundreds of people singing and then feeling this kind of literal groundswell of low frequency vibration come up through their bodies. That would be a very uh, awe inspiring experience. I mean, if we just hum, we feel the chest uh, vibrates. Um, sorry, one moment. I'm just going to open up the door. Some The cleaning lady's here. One moment. <laughs> it's, uh, most overwhelming trauma, most anxiety, uh, most emotional um, uh, uh, distress isn't uh, word based. It's it's sensation based. It's feeling. -based. So true. Yeah. So you don't you don't you know, you feel fear. Yeah. You don't talk fear. You feel fear. Um, and that response, that instinctive anxiety or stress-based or fear-based response produces very physical symptoms. But it's the interpretation of those symptoms that tells us whether we should like it or not like it.